anonymity. It's a condition of one's identity remaining a mystery to the outside world. And in a world that seems to get more and more connected each and every single day, keeping your identity a secret can become quite a difficult task. And because of this increasing difficulty in remaining anonymous, it's a natural provoking of our own curiosity when we stumble across someone who can do just that. We'll always have a subconscious itch to know everything we can. I mean, we're humans, you and I, and for centuries it's become society's natural way of advancement. We always want to be kept in the loop and in control, so when we're not, it's become almost instinct to ask, who is this or why is this the way it is? Today, I want to not just talk about our yearning of figuring out the unknown and the benefits anonymity brings to the lore or attractiveness of a you know, certain someone or something, but a specific case of an artist who has become just that to the Vaporwave community. A figure who has not only created some of the most beloved music in the genre, but has been able to remain completely anonymous along the way. An artist so mysterious and so unknown, we're only able to recognize and judge him solely on the content he creates. I'm talking about the brilliance of Telepath, a Vaporwave artist who specializes in the field of ambient, hypnotizing, slush wave vapor sound, and has become sort of a legend in the community with his lack of presence online, shrouded personality, and as previously stated, and most importantly, his masterclass production. An artist who is regarded by many to be the greatest product Vaporwave has ever created. An artist who has an unparalleled talent of putting the listener into a virtual stargazing trance, lifting their souls out of their bodily shell and floating them through a couple of comfy rainbow clouds and galaxies trillions of miles away. But what makes his music so damn good? Ladies and gents, I present to you, Who is Telepath? A Vaporwave Mystery. And to commemorate this video and celebrate the music, iconic aura, and overall legacy of Telepath, I am dropping a limited edition Telepath-inspired crew neck design on Aesthetico. This exclusive piece of Vaporwave apparel will only be available for 72 hours after this video is uploaded. So after three days, this piece will be gone forever. Click the link in the description of this video to purchase one. A major catalyst in the ever-changing meta of Vaporwave sound, Telepath has always been known to drop music that has remained original, refreshing, and exciting throughout the years, despite the concept that creating this more ambient side of Vaporwave sound or Slushwave yourself can be kind of easy if you just follow the, you know, the right steps. If need be, you can pretty much go into any sort of musical software like Fruity Loops or Ableton or whatever your heart desires and stretch a synth out for over seven minutes, right? Or drop a little chime or a little jingle in there every couple of measures and call it a day. And that's the interesting thing. There really are countless possibilities in what instrumentals you can put in or sounds you want to include, etc. Telepath has done it in a way that is very interesting and throughout his discography specifically, between the years 2013 and 2016, he has dropped pieces of music that are forever chiseled into the hearts of craving Vaporwave fans. Telepath has a unique ability at keeping you hooked, and that's very difficult to do in a slushwave subgenre that is known to loop the same thing over and over and over again. Looking at a majority of his songs, one's first impression can easily be, how the hell am I supposed to stay interested or last in a song that is 16 minutes long, really has no verse or intro or build up bridge or anything and is mostly the same melody notes or loop throughout well he achieves this control over us by choosing specific instrumentals or sounds within the same melody or loop over the period of an entire song and then he manipulates them with a countless amount of effects and filters throughout a super long period of time to truly create a thought-provoking mesmerizing quest from the beginning of a song to the end i know that's a lot to take in but let me give you an example let's say he's got a song that starts with like a lo-fi personality, maybe he's got a piano in there that sounds like it's coming from another room or underwater, you know what I mean. And it's kind of low, it's kind of in the background, you don't really think too much of it, but 17 minutes, let's say for example, because he's out of his mind, 17 minutes into the song, that piano has now transformed into a complete different pitch, sound, volume, maybe a heavy flanger on there, or it's pampered in reverb, the possibilities are endless with this dude. Almost take any song he has, and we'll see this practice done. And what's cool is it's something in the moment you don't realize, because if he had an effect that 
you know, starts at the beginning of a song and then ends 18 minutes or, you know, later or gets to the climax of it 18 minutes later and it's constantly stretching and constantly changing along the way in the same pace throughout the entire song, you won't really experience any immediate changes at whatever part of the song you're in because it's so gradual, where other artists might jump the gun and make a clear, crisp, change to a tone or sound, they'll get lazy and present the same sounds, textures, effects, everything looped for two minutes straight. Absolutely no change of anything within those two minutes along the way, just like a copy and paste over and over and over, and then abruptly switch to something completely different after telling themselves, okay, you know, maybe it's time to move on from this loop and I just, I gotta change it up. These artists can lose their listeners very easily. None of it is ever really smooth and transitions well and it is attractive to the ear. And this is where Telepath's awareness of musical patience is really seen. Each measure of his may be the same compositionally, but he's modifying and distorting so many different little things along the way to make those repeating notes bloom, have color, and not just be a non-stop 10 second loop over an entire song or section of a song. This method to his production style is completely intentional to our subconscious. He truly wants us to go on a journey within his music. Use our minds, shut them off at times, and turn them back on at times. Maybe two minutes into a telepath song, you'll start telling yourself, wait a minute, this is definitely a different vibe or feeling that I thought it was in the beginning. but I can't tell why. Is it the drums? Are they louder or lower? Is it, you know, the, this piano I'm hearing? Is that doing something different? I swear this song was more quiet and mustier, for example, in the beginning. You start to forget what you heard two minutes ago. He keeps you on this ever-changing journey, but takes his time with you. He picks you apart. You start to question the song, your taste for the song. Do you even want to still listen to it? Is it too slow? Is it too upbeat? Do you want to check out something else? Who, what, when, where, why? Until you realize you finish the song. You sat through the whole thing and you didn't even notice the time passing by. You went through moments of trance, moments of thought, epiphany, everything. You felt something in the song morphing throughout, but you couldn't put your finger on what it was or what was changing due to these super long, stretched out, low key and patient transitions. Right now, you can go to almost any of his songs on his bandcamp, listen to like the first 15 seconds, just pick one, and then just cut to the end, right? Click the end of the song and you'll really see how a lot of these pieces change drastically from their start to their conclusion, where along the way you might not hear it. I feel like a lot of Telly's longer songs can be condensed into a three minute track, where we could experience many of those changes quicker, to the point more up close and first hand. But I really do, and, and many others can agree with me here, I, we just like the way he's gone about making these songs over all these years. It's that telepath charm. It's like his songs are just vectors. They're infinitely stretchable. They just remain completely intact with their quality, intention, and re-listenability. That's another huge reason why a lot of people love and listen to telepath so much and so frequently his re-listenability. He has such a large amount of songs he's put out over the years with so many different unique touches and textures, filters, along the way to so many different things that if you were to listen to everything, let's say, right, and then start all over again from his first album, you'll completely forget what was on that first album. It's always refreshing, you know, listening to Telepath, and, and he's literally an open world vaporwave entity that is constantly generating polygons and renders of sounds every time you go back to him. He's ever-changing in songs that have remained the same since they were originally uploaded. And that's what makes Telepath so vivid, so alive, and so desirable to the ear. Mix this all with what I was talking about in the beginning, our craving for solving the unknown. Not only is he providing us with countless hours of never-aging music, but we almost know nothing about him. It's so interesting, you know, becoming so connected to his product, but for the man himself behind it, knowing almost nothing about him. The only thing I could really find out about him is that supposedly Supposedly he's some dude from Ohio who just loves making ambient music, and that's just that. And maybe he isn't looking at this hidden identity thing as a selling point, but more so as a chance to have his fans strictly critique him on his product and for what it is, not for who he is. It's pretty much the only thing he can be judged on, his music. And I can definitely relate to him, as Pad Chennington, I don't show my face 
or really my home too much or tell too much about me personally, I want you guys to judge me purely on the content I create, not who I am as a person per se. There really aren't too many distractions in what I'm trying to make for you guys. In a world where everyone seems to be worried about their image, I want you to watch me for what I'm making, not who I am as a person. You as a viewer to my videos or you as a listener to Telepath's music, you're getting exactly what you came for, the product, and not the person behind it. Telepath has a massive library of projects to listen to. I talk about a number of them in my countdown on my personal top 107 Vaporwave albums of all time video. If you want to get some specific selections to listen to by him, you can check that video out. But really, you can just randomly choose any of his projects on his Bandcamp page, and you'll definitely get caught in that Telepath trance. There's a reason why a lot of people love him so much. With Telepath, you, you don't know him or what he looks like or even what he likes himself per se. He puts his creations, his products, everything he makes right into your hands with no fat to cut off. The mystery of Telepath is actually quite easy to solve because when you look at it for what it is, there really isn't a mystery at all. It's pretty simple, it's just the most direct, holistic way for one musician to get their work to the listener in its purest form. An artist who can only be judged by the product he or she creates and not judge for the person they are themselves. Maybe it's better to not know everything and just experience things for what they are in the moment. Much love. Your boy, Pad Chennington.